I have some notes from Dave on Full Gear, WrestlingObserver.com. Dave Meltzer will be back, by the way, I think tonight. If not tonight, for sure Wednesday. But Dave notes the main event finish with Regal heading MGF the Nux was Tony's idea. You can look back at the last several weeks of the buildup, see the signs leading to it. Appears from the press conference, MGF and Regal will be a heel champion pairing, similar to Kenny Omega and Don Callis. There was another finish brought up by several of the most influential wrestlers. He says, we don't know what it was. Presumes MGF winning was not the question. It was just a different way to get there. It was an alternative way of getting there. Khan was strong on his finish. That Khan was strong on his finish, the, the direction this goes. I know for sure there were people in the company that also believed that he should have gone full babyface. What the alternative finish was, I don't know. But I do know that people, uh, there were people that thought that. Regarding the pay-per-view number, Khan noted to us regarding his comments last night, it was based on what they have now. Looks similar to All Out, which he would consider a success if it ends up in that realm without CM Punk. All Out was 140000 Last year's full gear, 155000 Most did not expect the show to have a shot at beating last year's numbers. Other full gears were ninety and 100000 Show was announced on the years a sellout, standing room only. It was actually a near sellout. 600 shy of what would have been a full sellout for a pay-per-view. It did top $1 million dollars. Uh, 1040000 for the gate. WWE tops this on every pay-per-view show as well these days. Greatly topped it for shows like Clash at the Castle and WrestleMania, which topped $8 million. Historically, aside from the 5AW seven-figure gates this year, there's only been one other non-WWE million-dollar gate in U.S. pro wrestling history, which was MSG's New Japan Ring of Honor show. A few shows for WCW would have done, done that if you adjust for inflation. But in... Um, whatever the term would be, uh, in 90s dollars. At the time, no WCW show ever broke $1 million at the gate. They came very close, but they never did a $1 million gate in uh, 90s money. Wayward Son by Kansas that the Elite used last night will be the trio's entrance music. Won't be used in regular tag or singles of matches. Young Bucks wanted the song for a long time. They and their father were big fans of the song. They thought that uh, the thoughts by people that it had to do with the situation of the past two months was something they were aware of, but the decision to use the song preceded that. And in fact, when they were backyarders doing their backyard wrestling promotion, which would have been the early 2000s, I believe, they used Wayward Son as their entrance music. So there you go. Notes from the show. Speaking of Giant Gates, Royal Rumble has surpassed $5 million at the gate, which was the previous record. They have now set gate records for 2022 and 2023. Gate records for WrestleMania, Extreme Rules, and Crown Jewel. So, in terms of selling tickets to major events, this place is on fire. And we have got Kenny Omega, Will Ospreay, announced for Wrestle Kingdom 17 for the IWGP United States title. So the lineup for the show on January 4th, we're about uh, six weeks away, Jay White versus Okada for the IWGP title, Will Ospreay, Kenny Omega for the U.S. title, Taiji Ishimori and Hiromu and El Desperado and Master Wato in a four-way for the junior title. FTR will be facing the winners of the Tag League. So FTR and Kenny Omega will be working the Dome and uh, and not the Seattle debut. We have got Zack Sabre Jr. versus Ren Narita in the finals of the uh, television title tournament. And the new IWGP Women's Champion, and we'll talk about that match on the Filthy Tom Show coming up at 2 Pacific 5 Eastern today, as well as his match at the Stardom New Japan Crossover Show. Kyrie will face Tom uh, Tam Nakano for the IWGP Women's Championship. So with Kenny Omega in Japan, that means there is uh, there is no uh, trios titles match in Seattle. So I wonder if the Young Bucks are also going to the Tokyo Dome. I have not heard one way or the other. And then the question is going to be about old Carl Anderson. Is he working the show? to drop that title, and to win me some money? 
I think he might be. But we shall see. Yes, Kyrie beat Mayu Iwatani with her insane elbow off the top. Thought they had an excellent match. I actually heard that the uh, the Kyrie match on the Stardom uh, pay per view on Friday uh, was better, but I have not seen that show yet. Um, but we'll talk about that as noted on the uh, Filthy Tom show later on this afternoon. Being the elite is back now that the elite are back. Young Bucks and Kinney return backstage on October 26th. They are still VPs, by the way, EVPs. Uh, they've re, they've uh, started doing whatever work they do as EVPs. And uh, what that is, I actually have no idea, but they do it. And then uh, they uh, talked about some, uh, some stuff on BTE. We're officially back. We, however, have been technically back, backstage for a few weeks. But now we've been on screen, we've wrestled, we've done it, we are back. Now being the elite is back, and everything is kind of back to reality, said Matt Jackson. You know what? I don't feel like we were officially back, though, until last night at Full Gear. We were around for four weeks, but it didn't feel like it. There was something missing, I think. And I think that something missing was us performing live. So we did that. We scratched the itch. We are back. He said that people don't understand because we haven't been able to really talk about it. But this has been two of the hardest months of my life, said Matt. I know Nick, too, and my family. Here we are. We got through it. You just never know what's going to happen until you do it. Just to hear the support last night and to hear how happy and to see how people, a lot of people were to see us. That really meant the world to us and Kenny. It felt good. You know, we're going through the healing process right now, but I think last night was a big step for us to get there. It felt good. I did hear that backstage, like, everybody was so happy after that match. Hugging, just happy that it was over and that they were back. And uh, and really a feeling that, you know, one of the things missing on Dynamite for the last several months, you know, we talked about the uh, booking going like this, uh, was also just you were missing Young Bucks matches. You were missing Kenny Omega matches. And, uh, and it was a hole in the show. I mean, there were still great matches and everything like that. But, you know, th- these Dynamite shows with... Uh, Death Triangle, Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega, week after week after week. I mean, the matches are going to be great, but I'm also looking forward to... I I, I don't know this, but I feel it's not just going to be, hey, let's go out and have a great match every week. There's a story that's going to be told here, and, and what that story is, you know, I predicted for the show that the Young Bucks were going to win and that the Death Triangle was going to split up when Penton Phoenix turned on Pac. And they didn't do that. And they had the finish where Phoenix used the hammer and got the win. But as noted, the way that they did it, Phoenix didn't want to use the hammer. He was offered the hammer earlier in the match and he threw the hammer away. He was all groggy. He was being lifted up on the shoulders. Pac shoved the hammer into his hand, and he got up there, and it was like, I either die or I hit this guy. Ba-bam, he hit him, and he was sad about it afterwards. And so they did that finish, but now they have a story that you can carry out through the rest of this best of seven, where my presumption is that when it ends, it'll be what I predicted for this weekend, which is the Elite wins the title, and uh, Pac ends up breaking up with Penta and Phoenix, and they go their separate ways. Um, there are other things you can do. I mean, DJ here notes that Penta didn't seem to mind the usage of the hammer. You know, I don't know what uh, Penta and Phoenix feel about them splitting and doing a series of matches, which I'm sure would be blow-away matches. Brother versus brother usually doesn't work in pro wrestling. Maybe this would be an exception. Or maybe they don't go that way at all. I don't know. Former UFC heavyweight champion, occasional professional wrestler, Kane Velasquez, has requested permission to be part of AAA's return to the U.S. on Saturday, December 3rd. He is out on $1 million bail on attempted murder charges from a February incident in which he allegedly chased down a man, fired a weapon into a truck that contained several people, one of them being a man who allegedly sexually assaulted both his child and one of a relative. 
in Santa Clara County Court on Monday for an arraignment. Uh, Velasquez and his legal team asked Judge Daniel Nishigaya for position, uh, permission to wrestle at the promotion's Tempe, Arizona show. They're first in the country since they ran New York City in September of 2019. Now, if this show were being held in Mexico, I would say no chance, zero, that they're going to allow him to go to Mexico, go over the border. But if the show has taken place in Tempe, Arizona, I think it's possible they're going to let him do it. So we shall see. They've been discussing the involvement, according to Mark Ramonde, since last week. Released on bail November 8th. He had wrestled for AAA three times before and uh, also wrestled for uh, WWE, that that crown jewel match against uh, Brock Lesnar, where he did that match, one house show, and then they fired him. And uh, Cain Velasquez loves Lucha. And uh, and I honestly think he's better suited for uh, Lucha matches in AAA than, than for WWE. But we'll see if they let him do it. That's going to be the big question. The hey. WWE legendary hey. joke, joke book. book. Why do WWE superstars fingers hurt? <laughs> 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 Why Grin. were Gene Erkerlund's pants always so angry? Erkerlund? <laughs> Where does Beth Phoenix shop online? Amazon? The Glamazon! Oh, yeah. Yep. No. No. I mean, no. <laughs> no, that is the answer. <laughs> Glamazon. That's what I said. <laughs> what? You said Gramazon. No, I said oh. Glamazon. Oh, there should be a Gramazon. <laughs> yeah, Gramazon, actually. You get, like, puppy you get it to you real slow. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.